Hi, and welcome back to another tutorial for our SQL database application. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use the delete statement. So this is the contents of all of the items in the course that we've looked at so far. So we're on the second to last item, which is deleting. My name is Shad Sluter, and I teach software development at Grand Canyon University. I'm glad you're here in class, and you too can become a professional web developer. You can find all the courses that I teach at studycoding.org. So make sure you sign up there and get a great career. So let's take a look at how we're going to finish off this uh, tutorial. So this is the app as we have it right now. I'm going to select something like Yellow Submarine. And you can see the new item that I have below is now a button that says Delete Selected. So let's click there. And I get a result uh, says one item was deleted. Click OK. And it blanks off. Now if I choose Yellow Submarine again, you can see that the item is deleted. So that's what we're trying to do is delete a track. Uh, we'll save deleting an album for another part, but we're trying to delete tracks in this part. So there are several steps we're going to accomplish. First of all, we're going to add a button to the form. Then we're going to add an item to the uh, DAO. And then when we're all done there, we should have our application working. So let's start here with the form, and I'm going to just drag a button in. So we're going to put a button in right below the table, and let's put the text on the button to say, Delete Selected Track. Now this isn't the most fancy uh, user interface you've ever seen, but I remember our focus here is about building a SQL database. All right, so we got the uh, button here, so let's double click it. So now we need to get in this event, we need to get whatever was selected in the table and then call a delete command. So I'm gonna scroll up here and I'm going to grab some code that will come in useful here. What I want to do is make sure that I have the number that is selected in the grid. So. This here, this row clicked, is the value that I'm going to use. So I'm going to copy that, and let's bring it down to our last item. So I want to make sure that the data vid grid view, I think it's number two, gets the uh, item. So let's, uh, let's put in the grid two, and then we're going to uncomment the line just to see if this is working. Let's test it out. All right, we got the app and running. Let's go ahead and choose load the albums. Uh, let's try help. I believe there are three items there. So I'm going to pick the uh, night before and choose delete selected. It says you clicked row one. So let's try this guy and do it again. And this does seem to indicate that it's got the row number correct. Now, I don't want the row number. I want the ID number. And you can see that in my example, 27, 28, and 30 are the ID numbers that I'm interested in. So I have to fetch the value from that column. To be able to get that value, I'm going to go back up to row 86, it looks like. So there was a statement here that says we're going to get the row clicked and then get the value out of one of the cells. So I'll copy him. All right, so let's go ahead and paste that item into there. And uh, it says here data grid view needs to have a more specific name. Let's try number two. And I'm going to save this as an integer. And instead of video URL, let's call this thing track ID. Now I've got almost everything there, don't I? Nope, this is a string. This needs to get out of the way. And I want to have the cells at column zero. So all of that now tells me to fetch the ID number out of the grid. We still have a problem though. We have an underline and let's check to see what it says. It says here, you're trying to convert something called an object to an integer. So what that means is there's no guarantee that column zero has the uh, integers in it. There might be an integer there if I saved it in the database as an integer. So I'm going to assume that it's there and what I need to do then is tell it we're going to cast the whatever comes out of that row and put it into an integer type. So there's a potential for an issue that the app could crash because well the database might not have actually an integer there. But remember this is trying to make this as fast as possible. No error checking really going on. Now I've got this uh, integer here. Let's see if it actually is an integer. We'll put a message box in. Just to confirm that that's actually what we're getting, I'm going to put in a message box that says ID of track equals, and then we're going to put in the uh, track ID value. Let's test that out. Once again, the app's running. Let's go ahead and choose an album. And then after I have the album, I'm going to pick something. So let's select somebody like Ticket to Ride, and then click the delete button. It says you are on row two. Clicked OK, and it says track ID is 30, which seems to indicate correct. So now it's time to advance where we can take that ID 30 and ask the database to delete that value. 
delete that track number. So in the next row down, I'm going to call upon our DAO and we're going to call a delete method. So let's make an instance of the DAO and then we're going to make a new call to it that doesn't exist yet. I want to save the results of that as an integer and I'm just going to call it result because I think it's the number of rows deleted, but I'm not sure. I'll test it out. So I'm just going to call it result. I'm going to be equal to the DAO dot and I'll invent a new method called delete track and provide it with the ID number of the track. So now that we're done with that, um, you're going to see that there's an underline not quite finished yet, but we do need to confirm something happened. So let's put another message box in to say the result. So what are we going to do with this delete track? It doesn't exist as you can see. So if I hover over the error, you're going to say there is no method found there. So let's ask for it to generate a result for us. So when I click that link, it should go into the other class and create that method for us. It's probably not implemented, but at least it's there. Let's go see what happens. So I'm going to go over to the uh, album's DAO and open it up. And you can see that I have the previous methods here. I have get, search, add, and here it is, delete track. So this is brand new. It returns an integer and it accepts something called the track ID. We're on the right track. Ha. Now let's see if we can add the code to make this happen. So let's go to the previous method, which was adding a new album. So we're going to copy most of the code in there and then insert it into our current method, which is for deleting. We'll make some modifications, obviously, and then we'll make the SQL statement work. All right, I'm going to go through here and clean things up. So first of all, the statement where it says we are going to do the insert, that obviously is wrong. So I'm going to just delete that for now. And then I'm going to have one parameter instead of four or five of them. So I'll delete all those. We're going to say instead of new rows, I'm going to call that a result. And then when I'm done, I'm going to return the result. So what do we have to do now? We have to add a SQL statement to make this happen. And after the SQL statement, we're going to have to modify the parameter that's going to be used, which is probably called track ID. So we'll use an at track ID for the placeholder. Now, the only thing left here is to go figure out the SQL statement. And we're going to get some help from the other part of our program, the MyAdmin tool. So now I'm looking at the table here for the tracks. I'm at PHP MyAdmin again. I'm going to come down to the very last item where it says uh, Yellow Submarine. So I'm going to select Yellow Submarine and then the uh, Delete option here at the bottom. And it says here I'm going to execute this statement. So this here is the exact code that I need. So I'm going to right click on that and copy whatever was in there. Now just to test it out, I'm going to choose yes. And it looks to me like it uh, worked. It says uh, yellow submarine is gone. So I got that code. Now I can switch back into my application and right between the little quotation marks, I'm going to paste it. So here is the code. So how do you do a SQL delete? Well, here's the answer. We do delete from, and then it has the table name. Then you have a where statement where the tracks ID equals something. So this 43 worked for one instance. Now I'm going to change that to be a track ID as a placeholder. And then I'm going to associate that placeholder value with what was passed in here. So this should all work, hopefully. Now remember, all these back ticks are kind of optional. I'm just going to leave them in for now because that's what MySQL seems to like. Down at the bottom, what do we got here? We got one more error. Return, return. How about, how about if we change that to result? <laughs> that might make more sense. Okay, so we're going to execute this delete statement. We're going to capture the results and send it back. And hopefully we get a delete. Now, I just deleted the yellow submarine and I want to put him back. So I'm just going to come back and do a SQL statement. And uh, I have this prepared where it's uh, inserting a new item. So I'm going to go and it looks to me like it uh, put it back in. Now we're at row 44. So uh, you might have to recreate an, a track if you've deleted them all. All right, it's time to run this. Let's go ahead and uh, click the green button for our app. And let's see if we can do a delete. All right, here we go. I'm going to load the albums and I'm going to try Yellow Submarine again. So let's go down to Yellow Submarine. There he is. So I've got it selected. Choose Delete This. It says you clicked row zero. It was ID 44 and the result was one. So it must be one row deleted. Now let's see, where did it go? Did it go away? Let's try Yellow Submarine again. Let's try it again and delete it. It says zero. 
ID 44. This time the result was zero. So you can see that my user interface is not quite updating. The second time I tried to delete this, um, it says there was nothing to delete. So I believe it was taken out of the database, but the uh, application on the screen, the user interface, didn't show the results. So let's make a quick tweak. So back here in Form 1, I'm going to make two changes. First of all, I'm going to erase the data source for Grid 2. So it'll erase everything that's there from the screen. Then I want to reload the albums because one of the tracks has been deleted and we need to refresh that. So we'll do another call to the database to fetch everything. All right, with those two steps, we should be able to see some results. Now I'm going to put in another copy of Yellow Submarine just so I can delete it. So I'm going to switch back and let's try the SQL statement. And let's see, do I have that copied somewhere? And so I've got this uh, insert statement to copy and then I'm going to choose go. So now we're up to track number 45. Let's see if we can delete that track. So switching back, I'm going to run the application this time and let's go and try to delete Yellow Submarine. So I'm gonna choose Load Everybody and let's go down to one of my tracks. Let's try Yellow Submarine. And then I go down to select the Yellow Submarine and delete it. It says zero, track 45, and the result was one. This time, as you can see, it deleted the screen. It emptied out the tracks. Let's try Yellow Submarine and this time it is empty. So it looks like the delete worked. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about more features that I'm going to leave for you as a challenge so that you can develop your skills and make this app complete. See you soon.